Today, I am building base windows images for differencing disks in Hyper-V. This allows for multiple virtual machines to be deployed in Hyper-V that share the same base image for ease of creating lab environments. First, let's look at the physical server we're working on. This is basically a desktop PC with an 8-core AMD CPU and motherboard that have virtualization support. There's plenty of RAM here with 16 gigabytes. I've also just added a 240 gigabyte SSD drive. Time to work on the server base image. I'm building a new virtual machine called Base 2016. It's good to have a plan for your Hyper-V file paths before deploying virtual machines. I'm using D Hyper-V for the machine path. This will make a folder in the name of the server under D Hyper-V that will have a child folder for the virtual machine and a child folder for the virtual disks. I'm going to use a Generation 1 machine with the default amount of memory. I will connect the network interface to the virtual switch named LAN. The machine will use a dynamic disk that will expand up to 40 gigabytes if needed. This should be sufficient for the lab scenario. Concluding the setup of the VM, I am selecting the DVD ISO for server 2016 as the installation media for this VM. Connect to the machine and turn it on. For this base image, we're really just going to click through the defaults to build the server. I will be choosing the data center with desktop experience edition of Windows Server 2016. While the Base 2016 install progresses, I'm going to set up the Windows 10 Base Image VM. This follows the same selections as I did previously for the Server 2016 VM. We'll just leave this one switched off for the moment so there isn't too much resource contention.
Now, let's switch back to the server installation in progress. This is going a bit slow because of the one gigabyte of RAM we assigned to the machine. But this is just the base image, so I'm muddling through by cropping out some of the video. Remember, you can eject the DVD at this point under the media option in the settings of the VM. While working with the base image, I have two objectives. First is disabling server manager from starting by default. Yes, it can be handy to have this, but it really can slow you down when you are working with several machines at once and you are waiting for each of them to open server manager. This is done by using PowerShell to get the scheduled task named Server Manager and disabling this scheduled task. The second thing we'll be doing here is enabling remote desktop access. We really don't want to spend a lot of time working in the Hyper-V console. We just want to do it long enough to get the machine into a state where you can RDP to it. RDP seems much faster and less cumbersome than working with machines in Hyper-V console. Plus there's the added benefit of copying and pasting to and from RDP sessions. There, you can see we accomplished the two objectives, 
disabling server manager schedule task and enabling remote desktop next, I will be running sysprep to generalize the machine and shut it down. The final objective is done after running sysprep and shutting the image down. In Windows Explorer, I'm mounting each of the images and copying some basic PowerShell scripts that I want to have on the C drive of each machine. These scripts allow for me to use the copy and paste inside the Hyper-V console to do the minimum setup to get each machine ready for its role in the labs. This includes configuring the IP address, formatting additional volumes, renaming the computer, and rebooting. Once the VMs that are based on these images reboot, I can then use RDP to connect to them. Look for my next video, 